In this project I'll show you how to build a lazy Suzy or turntable, depends how you want to call it. Either way, it's wonderful for shots that you need to put something on a table that, that will spin with an engine. As you can see in my example, one with a color and one with natural wood color. The unit itself is a turntable that I bought from Ikea, uh, which is very cheap. First thing will be to take out the nut that came with it, as we don't need the screw that's holding this plate. So we took it off and now we need to take the three screws that's holding this base to the plate. So with a small screwdriver, just taking it out, taking this center screw and throw it away since we don't need it. Now put this unit back in place and take a 6.5 drill and drill inside this wood plate, but not all the way, only half. Next, we'll take this wooden uh, connection, it's a unit that usually connect with uh, two pieces of wood, and I'm, as you can see, taking an epoxy to glue it to the base. Small amount of epoxy, and inside, on it, and we'll be ready for connected this wooden part and just to make sure it's fine, small hammer and uh, we are okay. Yeah, centers and ready. And take the excess glue outside. Now I'm cutting a gas pipe, which I found in a hardware store. Basically any type of gas or just uh, air compressed pipe will do the job since it needs to be a bit hard. And the next stage will be to put the epoxy inside so we'll and also on the wood part and then we'll put the pipe on this wood so it will fit right on it. If you want the timetable to be in color, just paint it with a spray in black or any color that you want. And we'll put this unit back so we can see that it can spin and it doesn't touch either corners of this plate. Now putting back the screws so it will be in place. Next stage we'll take the plate that we took out earlier, take out this rubber stuff as we don't need it, and we're going to drill with this unit as you can see here just to enlarge the hole in the center because as you saw before since it came with a nut it's not drilled all the way, so we just enlarging the hole to be equal in both sides, so it's not drilled half the way, it's drilled all the way in the right uh, size. Since it's more than 10 millimeters, then I took this unit to enlarge it to about, I think, 22 or even more. Next, I'm taking, this is our handle for uh, cabinet which we'll use as legs for our build, just putting it in place and then taking a marker and mark the place. Again, doesn't need to be a specific place, just see that it fits and that it looks okay. Again, doesn't need to be there. And then we'll of course drill this hole with a 5.5 millimeter drill since the screws that came with it are 5 millimeters, so 5.5 will easily go in. And I'm putting the screws in the other side and screwing on it the legs, which are usually basically a door knob or door handles that came for closets. In our case, of course, it's uh, the legs. So we just taking a screwdriver and screw it all the way, so it will be nice and tight. And then taking a hot glue gun and putting glue here as you can see and putting back the plate just make sure it's right in the middle so the pipe doesn't touch the plate and just to make sure we can spin it to see that it doesn't touch anything next we'll cut this pipe as close as we can to the bottom of this plate and we'll take in the engine this is an engine that used for microwave plate so it will be wonderful for our build since it's turning very slowly 
and working on regular household voltage. In my case this is 230 volts, but you can also find it in 110 volts, depends on your country of course. And then just putting a bit of uh, epoxy as you saw before and screwing it with four screws uh, directly to this wood plate. I didn't drill anything before so it's, it's a screw that uh, also drilled during the way. Next I bought a cable with an on-off switch from IKEA, again something very cheap, okay, everything is ready, just need to cut the end and uh, expose the two wires of course, as you can see me doing here. Next we'll take a heat shrink sleeve, again on the main unit and on every wire, just so it will cover the connection after we'll solder, that, solder it to the engine. Uh, I didn't mention but this uh, wire that I purchased from IKEA is coming with an on-off switch on the wire itself, so no need to deal with that as well. Again, the whole thing is in this build that it will be very simple to make. Putting, as you saw me before, if you saw my other movies, solder pasting, which is doing the trick to make everything smooth and easy to solder. And putting a bit of that here. And on the other leg of this engine. Next, connecting the two wires which you see is very easy to do when everything is ready. And of course, next stage we'll be taking the heat shrink and putting it to cover up the connections so nobody will get electrified from it. Next, I'm putting a rubber legs on top of our legs so it will caution the whole connection to it to any table since it's turning around so there won't be any noise coming out from this whole unit. And I'm putting two screws here to hold the electricity cable so it won't move. And above that we'll use our hot glue gun to glue everything in place as you can see me doing it right now. And that's it, it's working and you can see here the on off switch. That's all for this build, hope you enjoyed it. If you do, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.